So I wanted to take some time to explain the main interface of OBS and what each of these individual sections down here at the bottom are and how they come together in order to provide your video recording or your live stream to sites like YouTube or Twitch. So in the bottom left hand corner we have individual scenes. A scene is going to be a collection of video sources which are all going to come together to provide what your viewer eventually sees. So at a very basic level that can be a screencast like this video which would just be a display capture inside of your video sources but you may get more complicated adding things like live stream alerts, image overlays if you want to display a logo, or video capture devices like a webcam. So oftentimes you'll actually need more than one source, but all of those sources go into individual scenes. So the reason for having more than one scene is that on any given day you may decide that you're recording different things with a different setup. So you might have one set of sources for one game or a different set of sources when you are recording a different game. So you just group all of those sources how you want them under individual scenes. For either scenes or sources, you can add a new one by either clicking on the plus button at the bottom of each of those panels, or you can right click. And if you go into the sources add menu, you'll see that there's a bunch of different sources that you can use in order to record your video. Now some of these do overlap. For instance, display capture, game capture, and window capture are three different ways of recording your screen, so they can all technically be used for recording something like a game. But depending on the game, you may get better results depending on if you choose display capture, game capture, or window capture. So depending on exactly what you're recording, you'll have to play around with that a little bit to figure out which kind of capture actually works best for the program you're working on. In another video, I'll go into all of these in much more detail, but I'll leave it at that for now. So the next panel over is your audio mixer. As long as you have audio devices attached in the settings of OBS, you should see some bars here for audio. So if you don't see that, we can always go up to the file settings menu, go down to audio. So under audio devices, desktop audio refers to the sounds that are coming out of your computer, basically your computer audio output. So if you were say playing a game and that game has music, that would come out under desktop audio. And then mic slash auxiliary audio, that would be your audio input devices, such as a webcam or a USB microphone. So as long as you have your devices connected, you should be able to click here and select the proper audio devices. So for instance, if you want to use whatever your current audio device is on your computer, you can use desktop audio default, which would be whatever your current audio device is. And then under mic auxiliary, you would simply want to use the microphone that you have connected to your computer that you want to use. And then you can hit apply. And what should happen is that you should see those pop up under the audio mixer. So as you can see here, because I'm obviously talking into my microphone, you can see that audio levels are popping up for the microphone in the mixer. If I add sounds playing on my computer, you should also see that under desktop audio. So whenever you're receiving audio information, you should see these bars fill up indicating that they actually are receiving audio information. If not, then you'll probably have to do a little bit of troubleshooting for your computer. So next up we have scene transitions. If you're recording something more like a podcast and you want to switch between different cameras, different people, then scene transitions may be a bit more relevant to you. So this defaults to cut. So whenever you cut between scenes, that would be where it instantly changes from one scene to another. So if I click on OBS logo and the scenes here, and I click back to the Brave Browser logo, you can see that as I click on the other scene, it makes an instant transition. There's no fade or anything. You can see that as soon as I click on the other scene that the switch is instantaneous. So there's another default scene transition, which is a simple fade. If you switch to fade, you'll see duration in milliseconds. That's how long you want the scene transition to take. So now if I click on the scenes, it will actually fade between them over 300 milliseconds, which is where one becomes more transparent as the other one comes into view. So this kind of thing is more relevant when you're doing something like a podcast and you actually have somebody controlling everything behind the scenes. And if that was the case, you would probably use studio mode over in the controls. So in studio mode, you can actually click on the next scene you want to switch to. And then at the perfect timing, you can click on the transition button or set up a hotkey to do it. And then by clicking on transition, whatever was in the preview now becomes the live recorded program. And then you can click on the next scene that you may want to switch to at some point and click transition again. Inside studio mode you can also choose at the time of your choosing uh, whether you want to make an instant cut or a fade with the default settings. So clicking transition will use your default scene transition, but you can still choose to basically override that by clicking on the one you want 
So relatively straightforward. Anytime you want to turn off studio mode, you just click on the studio mode button again. So let's quickly talk about the other controls. So the start streaming and start recording. If you click on start recording, that's going to be taking whatever is showing on this preview window and recording that to a file on your computer or your network, wherever you have your default file output location set to, which you can do in the settings. Whenever you click start recording or start streaming, you obviously get the option to stop it as well. These are also things you can customize with hotkeys if you prefer to click a combination on your keyboard rather than having to go into OBS to click on these controls manually. So what you might notice is it's actually possible to start recording and start streaming at the same time. So what you can do with OBS is you can output to a video file while also uploading the live video to a site like Twitch or YouTube. So in that case, you would want to have start recording and start streaming, both chosen at the same time. Of course, in order to start streaming properly, you have to set that up in the settings menu, which I'll talk about more in a different video. So lastly, there's a menu item for settings here. It is exactly the same as if you went up to the file menu and then chose settings from here, but you can click on settings, which will open up all of the settings for OBS. There's quite a lot of settings to customize, but generally if you need to change something about how OBS works, it's going to be in the settings menu, obviously. So pretty much if there's something you needed to change about OBS aside from your scenes or sources, it's going to be over there in the settings menu. And so the exit button at the bottom is the same as clicking the X button on any program. Uh, it'll give you a warning if you're actively recording, so you probably want to shut down your streams or recordings before you actually exit the program, of course. Um, but really straightforward. But in a nutshell, that's going to be everything about the basic interface layout of OBS, Scene Sources Mixer, Scene Transitions, and the controls. Uh, I hope this was clear for you guys, and I will see you guys in my future video content.